welcome. Welcome, beloved children of God. Welcome to this holy day. Welcome to Ash Wednesday, the first day of the season of Lent. If you are in Statesboro, you are welcome to come to our campus at 1215 Fair Road this evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We will have the imposition of ashes, the sharing of communion, and a series of engaging prayer stations throughout our campus. If you're joining us online, we will be placing ashes on our own foreheads later in this prayer service, so be mindful and prepared for that. You can gather dirt or dust or any oil, any of that, so that you might join us in this ritual. This day, Ash Wednesday, is a day that we honor how again and again God gives us an eternal invitation, an invitation into a more contemplative life of faith, an invitation to renew our spirituality, and an invitation into a deeper awareness of our relationship with the triune God. And we pray here at First Church that on this day of bright sadness, you might carve out space for personal reflection and for intention setting right here at the start of this journey, knowing that the more honest we are with our hopes for this season, the more meaningful Lent may be. So let us begin by being still. Wherever you are, settle into that space. I encourage you to gently close your eyes, Notice your breathing. Take a few deep breaths. Our scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58. I'll be re reading from the message translation. Shout, a full-throated shout. Hold nothing back, a trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family, Jacob, with their sins. They're busy, busy, busy at worship and love studying all about me. To all appearances, they're a nation of right-living people, law-abiding, God-honoring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do and love having me on their side? But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? 
Well, here's why. The bottom line of your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast I'm after? A day to show off humility, to put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A day, a fast day that I, God, would like? This is the kind of fast day I'm after. To break the chains of injustice, get rid of exploitation in the workplace, free the oppressed, cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering, ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this, and the lights will turn on, and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help, and I'll say, here I am. If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins, if you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I will give you a full life in the emptiest of places, firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything. Restore old ruins, Rebuild and renovate and make the community livable again. This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Ash Wednesday is a special day because it marks the beginning of something new. We are standing at the door of a journey into deeper faith, and God is inviting us in. This we know to be true. We cannot grow deeper and be transformed without God. So 
as we begin this season, we confess together, asking for God's help in this new beginning. We're asking for God to hold open the door. So let us pray. Holy God, we know that you are near, for you are always here, gathered among us just a breath away. And despite knowing your nearness, we still stumble over ourselves, unsure of how to pray. Bring our hearts into this room. So often we talk to you like a stranger, praying prayers of small talk about the weather and surface level concerns. We keep genuine fear and doubt tucked into corners, out of sight, out of mind. Bring our hearts into this room. And so often we try to think our way to you, as if we could use logic or our minds alone to explain your great unknown. We forget what we knew as children. We forget how to feel our way to you. Bring our hearts into this room. And too regularly, we limit our experience of you to one hour a Sunday, missing your constant invitation into the holiness all around us. Forgive us. Guide us. Bring our hearts into this room. We are here, God. We want to begin again. Bring our hearts into this room. Amen. Friends, whether you are standing at the door of a deeper faith journey, unsure of what comes next, or running your way through the threshold, you are claimed, forgiven, and loved by God. Again and again, we are forgiven. Again and again, we are loved. Again and again, we are invited in. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen.
This is the story of the beginning, of when God first made people, of God's invitation to be forever included and welcomed in was first set free. See, God was so full of love that God wanted to share it. Sure, there were stars and birds and fish and trees, but God wanted to share life. So God scooted over to make room for us. God got down on the ground that God had made, the dusty, dirty ground, and God put God's own hands in the dirt. And like a sculptor, God began to form a body, a human body from that dust. Each little move of God's fingers shaped a different part, a nose, a belly, two feet so the body could move and dance and explore. And when God had shaped that very first body, God breathed and air filled the body's lungs, and all of a sudden, God was no longer alone. God's love had flesh and bones and life. God had someone to share all this love with. And yet God also knew that people would forget. That it would be hard to hold on to a love like that, even if God was never letting go. And so in time, God began again. God began again by sending God's own beloved son, Jesus Christ a human bodily invitation that people might know that they are forever included and welcomed in and set free by grace. Because God's own heart was so full of love that God couldn't help but share it through Jesus. Sure, there had been prophets and poets and matriarchs and patriarchs, but God wanted to be on the ground with us, walking and talking, teaching and healing, hurting and knowing how good it is to forgive, to befriend and to bless, to lament and to long. God wanted to share life. And so that's what we remember today. How God loves us, and so God made us, and how God loves us so much that God sent God's own beloved child to share that love among us. This is the invitation today to remember that love again and again, and to remember how it is abundantly available for all. So as we put ashes on our foreheads, we will remember how the first body was made from dust and from God's own hands. But we'll put that dust on our foreheads in the shape of a cross to remember the sign of God's own beloved son, who was born and lived and died and was buried and rose again because a love like that, a love like that is worth sharing. And we will remember as that dust is on our forehead and we walk around with it during the day how God loves us, God made us and wants to be in relationship with us and how how we are called again and again into a life lived with God through Jesus Christ. We will say, I am a child of God, I am dust, and to dust we shall return. For we are children of God. 
and we belong to God. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, and in whatever may come. So beloved, may we remember who we are, saying, I am a child of God. I am dust, and to dust I shall return. Wherever you are, I invite you to take dirt or ashes or oil or simply make the sign of the cross upon your forehead. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. As you leave your space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. And may your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, and go in peace. Amen.